Hi, my name is Łukasz Potrzebka and welcome to our next Digital Dexterity Labs webinar. I'm here today with my colleague uh, Peter. How are you Peter today? Good, thank you. Uh, I've invited Peter because uh, due to his uh, vast experience in uh, both uh, working with global clients in the field of uh, digital workplaces and Microsoft 365 services, as well as uh, managing global and distributed teams. Uh, Re-engage, remote workforce, user experience, inter inter internal communications. We are going to start in a second. But first, Peter, if you could just introduce yourself. Yes, Peter Sonat. Uh, I've been working with uh, SharePoint and Microsoft technology and the cloud uh, really for the last 16 years. Yeah. Oh. Is that long? <laughs> Yes, time flies, yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so uh, let us begin, but uh, before we do, uh, first things first, uh, we are recording today's webinar, so uh, you will be uh, sent the link to the recording afterwards. Uh, we are also running Q&A session in the background using chat, so if you have any questions, just feel free to ask them there, and we, will going, we are going to answer all of them during the web webinar or as uh, uh, within a summary if the, the response isn't that straightforward. Mm, and yeah, <laughs> I know that this webinar is presumably the last thing that separates you from the weekend, so we'll do our best to yep. keep you entertained. <laughs> yeah, to keep you engaged, yep. yeah. So, oh, and if you are talking about engaging, uh, two more words about the title of our webinar, which is Remote uh, Workforce, how to re-engage it, user experience in internal communications. So a lot of, a lot of difficult words and phrases. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so let me just, uh, uh, let me just introduce you to it. Um, I don't know if you recall, I think everyone does, uh, two years ago, um, something changed in terms of how we, how we work. Isn't it right? Yep. Uh, so uh, there and it's are not going away, by yeah, the way. It is <laughs> not going away, and um, yeah. So uh, at first, when everyone had to, because it was like that, everyone had to work remotely in mostly remote environment, not even hybrid one. Uh, everyone wanted to prove themselves. Everyone wanted to show that they are still able uh, to do to do the same tasks as good as they. Were to do, uh, they were doing it before the pandemic. So uh, in short term, two years ago, uh, everyone was very motivated to get things done remotely. And uh, we have surveys that show, I don't know if you've read them, that in short term, the productivity went up. At the yes, beginning. that's correct, yeah. So, so everyone pushed themselves, right? Everyone was like constantly online and answering uh, instantly the pings, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's true. so we um, all ex I think we all experienced that, right? Yeah. That pressure. So, uh, so people were motivated, people were engaged at first, uh, which is unfortunately not the case now. So, when we are talking about the engagement topic, I say let's talk about how to re engage people once again as they were two years ago. So, how let's let's motivate them once again. So this is why I'm saying re-engage. Remote workforce is quite obvious. And uh, we have this thesis for today. So we are going to re-engage people by, uh, well, internal communications. That's, uh, uh, that's for sure. We've already discussed this several times already uh, during the webinars in DDL, uh, how internal communications uh, improve engagement and productivity. Uh, and what we are going to uh, show today that we can work on that, work on that using user experience. So using how do people feel about well their surroundings, their their workplace. Well, obviously digital workplace because we are digital dexterity labs, not dexterity labs. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we are going to talk about the digital uh, services. So. In other words, we are going to discuss how to motivate remote work workers to well to do more, so they uh, they want to engage using some some tools that improve experience in digital internal communications. So, in little more detail, we will start with uh, discussing hybrid uh, work model and user engagement. As the matter of fact, we already did start this. Um, the, then we will share you with our idea 
uh, how we can tackle the challenges we are going to show you just in a second. So, so what's, the, uh, 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 what's the solution here? And well, spoiler alert, since the next two points are the product names, you can expect that we are going to, to suggest to, uh, to keep an eye on those products, Microsoft Viva and Gage Designs. Uh, most probably you've already heard about Microsoft Viva, and most probably you didn't hear about Engage Designs, but it will change in yep. like 40 minutes from now. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, a summary, but today we're going to do something special. Uh, Peter, uh, you will share with us the, what else can be done in terms of managing expectations and driving engagement, uh, user engagement, yeah? Yes, yes, because it's a, a little bit wider topic and there is a lot of elements how we can help with user engagement and well-being and feel included and part of the team and part of the brand and everything. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, a task for us for now. I feel like everyone who is here with us today may feel like this, this, all these bits are not connected together yet, <laughs> but we are going to connect them in the next 40 minutes. So, please stay tuned. Once again, thanks for joining us today. Okay, so hybrid work model, user engagement, what can we say more about those? So first two, I'm sorry about it, these are cliches and we are already, we have already discussed them a little bit today. So the decrease in employee engagement is noticeable. So, well, we've already told what, what is the cause. There are surveys and research that proves, it, proves this uh, as well. And well, even from our own experience, own, uh, own observations, I see a decre decrease in engagement in my surroundings as well as, maybe I shouldn't confess to it, by in my own, own actions as well. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think we all, we can all admit that, that it's, it's a little bit different than, yeah, than two years ago. By the way, I'm not sure if you remember, two year, exactly two years ago, I think we did, uh, uh, that was the last time we did the webinar together, and that was actually about deploying remote uh, work uh, uh, yeah, you model. That. Yeah, that's true, that's true. And we've discussed how to do it efficiently just to kickstart. Yeah, and quickly, and quickly, because that was really the urgency was there, right? Because companies, it was almost like, yeah, survival kind of uh, mode, right? For a lot of these companies, yeah, so yeah. absolutely. Putting these pieces together, now we are talking about how to, <laughs> how to uh, sp get this spark we had two years ago. And yep. I think we, we will show how to, at least an idea how to approach this. Okay, so uh, employees are often less flexible and resistant to change. Uh, this is the result of them being less engaged. And uh, obviously, a lot of us uh, want to introduce uh, changes to organizational culture, to, I don't know, to workplace, both physical and digital one, and in the many, many other areas. And when people are not motivated, they just not exactly feel like they want to be a part of it, right? Yep. Uh, they are staying at their own homes and they are thinking, okay, so why are you telling me what should I do when I'm at my home, right? Yep. So they are not motivated, they, they do not want it, and they are less, well, flexible and resistant to it. So this is the problem uh, that is often seen around. Um, interesting statistic that, that says that over 50% of hybrid workers plan to go remote during next year. So the, this hybrid environment is, is becoming more and more important. The remote workplace is there. We are not going to, it is not going to go away, as you, as you already said before. Um, this is also so we have to, uh, something we have to keep in mind. Yes, I think people want to keep it. It's, it's all about the pros and cons, right? And there is a lot of pros and a lot of cons of that, but definitely the, the pros, people they don't want to give it up, right? Yeah, because for many of people, this was, this was something that they were waiting for, right? So they wanted to work for, for, from home. So everyone was given the opportunity. Of course, I'm saying everyone, and that's not exactly everyone. We're talking about general uh, here. And it was a good proof of concept, yeah. proof of value, right? Yeah. And everyone see that, well, it is possible. So if it's possible and it was already given to the people, it's difficult to take that back. And they are planning to use it, which is good. We should look at it as a, as a good thing, but it has something to, uh, to consider. So this is something we see, but uh, besides of things we see, there are also things people feel about it. So 
20, I don't know if you know, of course we can see it on my slide right now, but 20% of people feel less productive, especially during summertime. This was al always with us, right? The summertime was also always something that, uh, that drove people uh, less engaged. But right now, uh, well, it is more and more uh, impactful. So people feel less productive. And if they feel less productive, they are less productive, right? So uh, that's, that's no brainer here. And they also feel disconnected from the brand of their employer. They feel disconnected from the organizational culture they are, they are in. They are uh, encapsulated in their home offices that looks the same in different employers, right? They, they yep. Yeah, it they opens their mind for change. I mean, we have this, you know, the great resignation, obviously, yeah, in, in the US, right? That's true, and that's our conclusion, that this leads to the employee resignation, because if they do not feel like they belong, if they feel that they are not doing as performing as good as they could, so maybe they should switch the environment. Maybe this is the change they think of, right? So yeah. this a is lot of the time for the first time ever, right? Because they were connected to the office, to the people inside the office, to these small talks next to the coffee machine, right? Uh, and it's all gone. Suddenly, it, it, yeah, it went away, right? So yeah, it definitely had the impact and, uh, and they felt disjointed for sure. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so what could we do about this? So, so what are some insights or the thesis, the thesis, our thesis we, are already, we have already mentioned? So once again, we start with a cliche. <laughs> the importance of digital workplace is rising. So physical offices were always important. Uh, well, you even F point had a lot of offices, right? So You're 29 or something like that, yeah. I'm pretty sure you use those just to motivate people. Do you have any examples of... Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, as a uh, half point, obviously, we're talking about half point where I spent over 12 years uh, is a very global company, multicultural company. And we always try to do unique things that were resonating with the local teams. So that mm -hmm. was quite important. This local identity was quite important to them. And I think we got it right. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, a good example or almost extreme example uh, to, to many people when I mentioned that, I'm not sure if you ever heard the story, but in one of our US offices, we actually had a half of real size basketball court inside the office on the one of the top floors, right? Uh, that you could play basically during the day and watch the city views, right? So that was, that was pretty, pretty significant, right? Hard to believe uh, that people do that and Halfpoint did that and with a lot of success because obviously basketball is big in the US, right? And the guys loved it, so. Yeah, I imagine. And yeah, this is pretty extreme uh, uh, the example, but still, uh, well, I am surprised, right? Because that's, that's a very good, uh, very, uh, very interesting thing. But still, uh, we heard about those uh, Google workplaces, the whole campuses. The, yeah, the, the they're effort, like cities, yeah. Yeah, the effort employers put into making this digital, uh, not digital, the, the physical surroundings for the employee important, yep. motivating and, you know, uh, caring about their well-being, which is not always the case when it comes to digital workplace. And when we come back to the statistic we already, we've already seen, 50% of people are going full remote, planning to, planning to go yeah. full remote next year. So half of the employees won't be able to play on this court. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably they need to rethink that cost. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. I probably I will ask next time I'm, I'm in the US with, uh, with the folks. So I will definitely ask, you know, how's the... How's the basketball court? Yeah, and I'm not, say, I'm not saying, you know, the, the get rid of the basketball court. I'm saying uh, put, a, I don't know, basketball court into the digital workplace, <laughs> if it's even even possible, but still. Uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, we should not focus on how much time employees spend in digital workplace, because it's, they are not the same. As I said, we are not able to put a, a basketball court directly into digital workplace because it's digital. The same goes with time we, we, we are supposed to measure, right? So when we have offices, we have all the systems that track time employees spend within it because we have those, this, those expectations. You yeah. should be in the office from uh, nine to five, right? And that's something we got used to and that's okay. But it's something that, that cannot be transferred to digital workplace itself. Okay. Yeah. So what, what are we going to do? Sit in the front of the computer for your for next eight hours starting at nine? That's something just that just uh, it's not motivating people. Uh, actually, it, disc it discourages them from working, right? 
all these work ba work work life balance uh, aspects, right? So when I am at home, I would like to organize my own time. So please yeah. don't tell me how much time I have to spend here. But instead, which is the uh, the thesis we are going to uh, uh, to mention today, try to improve the digital workplace experience, making any amount of time employee spends within this digital workplace worthwhile. So you are not micromanaging their time, you are managing their, well, energy instead, right? Yeah, so, exactly. So uh, this, is the, this is the idea of what, what could be done in terms, of, uh, in terms of improving digital workplace, internal communications, of course, because now we are going to dive in into internal communications, and by that, engaging and motivating people, people more, right? So, yeah, uh, we are going to switch to internal communications now. And when we are talking about internal communications, Microsoft technologies, of course, there is going to be a lot of SharePoint, <laughs> some SharePoint. Yeah, it's still there, right? Yeah. A little bit hidden in the in, in, in behind. Yeah, you know? and improvement to it, of course. So Microsoft Viva Suite. But before we dive into Microsoft Viva Suite, um, we already started talking about SharePoint. Uh, any thoughts about SharePoint? Any uh, I don't know, experiences with it or, or uh, from both perspectives, the manager or the, the person who, yeah. who sold products yeah. within it? Yeah, I think, I think it's still fair to say uh, or to use that famous uh, quote from Gartner, uh, where basically it said that SharePoint loved by IT and avoided by the business. And, uh, and I think that was very much true uh, over the years. Uh, now, obviously, Viva is changing the landscape a lot. Uh, it brings the attention to the right, uh, to the right place, actually, right? But over time, uh, you know, like, yeah, I work with SharePoint, and, and there was a big difference, especially on the customer expectation. When I work with the customers, there was a big difference between what they saw as an art of possible on these presentations and what they saw after the deployment, actually, what they faced uh, in terms of the technology itself, because there was a big a difference, almost a cold shower for them, uh, because it looked very technical. The vocabulary was very technical, right? They couldn't, they struggled to figure it out. Uh, what's uh, top site, uh, site collection, right? Site, sub oh, lists, right. libraries, <laughs> right? Yeah, it, it was confusing for the business, right? And I'm not mentioning check in, check out thing, you know, before in the older versions, right? But yeah, it was. It was it was difficult, um, and uh, and yeah. Hence, I could I probably I'll draw the sentence that or that it was IT centric rather than user centric, and Viva obviously uh, trying to change that uh, landscape, right? Yeah, but we are getting ahead because well, uh, first things first. Do you recognize those? Oh, of course, they are connected with Microsoft Viva. <laughs> it's not no surprising, but can you distinguish them? Which is well, uh, not yet. Not yet. I'm working on it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so uh, I would lie if I said that uh, I am able to do it, you know, anytime at night. Uh, but still, uh, I think the, those uh, those need a little more attention, since, as you already mentioned, they are improving what's already good and trying to change the perspective of, well, all Microsoft 365, really. Uh, because uh, Microsoft Viva Suite uh, does exactly what we just suggested, right? It, changes the perspective so we can look at digital workplace from the user view, right? So it tries to, to deliver the services and, and some um, good experience to the user himself, herself, right? And uh, each of those does, does a little part within it. So we have, we have Viva Insights that gives us the insights about uh, both our calendar, where, when we should book some time just to focus on working, right? Mm -hmm. It changes automatically our, uh, our status on Teams, so we are not getting disturbed doing, getting things done. It also gives us insights about the well-being of our employees, right? Because those employees are being constantly asked, how do you feel today? And we have those smiley faces like we have on airports, right? So how do you feel? How do you feel about customer service there? How do you feel about, well, yourself today? So, so it shows someone cares, right? Yeah, yeah, it shows that someone cares, and actually, it gives those insights to managers. Yeah, and those managers also get uh, suggestions about organizing one-to-one -one sessions with some employees. For example, you haven't talked with this person for quite time now. Maybe you should you should schedule a, a call. And I will do it for you. Says Viva Insights. So yeah, we we got those we get those insights, and those insights are are about 
well-being, right? Either our well-being or a well-being of our of our colleagues. Yeah. We have Viva Learning, and Viva Learning is a portal that employee can find resources to improve himself, herself, right? To to uh, to uh, to learn something new, which is also important from this from this experience yeah. perspective. We have Viva Topics that. Uh, that gathers all the information there is, so uh, and uh, uh, all unstructured information put into Microsoft 365 and organizes its, uh, the, 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 this information into topics. So, okay, any amount of work you do is important. So you do not have to take your, your document and put it somewhere else, label it differently, so you can get emails afterwards, which one is correct, because there are two, ex two, two, uh, two instances of it. So Viva Topics, uh, Viva Topics embrace all the information you put into Microsoft 365 and organize it, it into topics and, well, feeds uh, the all, the, all the information about it to people, let's call it in runtime, right? So when you type an email or read, read an email and there is this topic mentioned, you can just hover over the uh, uh, the topic itself, and you will just know what it's about. So how great is that? It's saving my time. It's yep. doing it for me, right? Yeah, it's cool. And last but not least, something we are going to focus on today: Viva Connections, which is uh, uh, which is uh, uh, connected to SharePoint greatly. And this is why we talked about SharePoint because yeah. well, Viva is all about Microsoft 365 and user experience. But since we are going to dive into internal communications, which is done greatly by SharePoint and Yammer and Microsoft team as well. My Viva Connections connect those, right? So it's a gateway to employee experiences, different experiences, right? It's a mobile experience, it's desktop experience, it's put within Microsoft team and it gives us the ability to curate the content and deliver the tools we want to deliver to the specific target audiences, mm -hmm. right? It's from the perspective of an editor, but as an employee, I have this gateway, this landing page. I can go inside and I will get all the, mo the necessary information I need. It's built on existing capabilities uh, we have in Microsoft 365 that are, of course, somehow communication correct connected, like SharePoint, Teams, Yammer, Streams. We can also integrate other tools using uh, using uh, dashboard mm -hmm. we have in Microsoft yep. Viva Connections. So yeah, so this uh, this gathers all the information and put it in a way that is, well, easiest to digest yep. by our minds. Let's call it like that. And yeah, I know, so uh, a disclaimer, I know all of those Viva products are great and deserve their own webinars. As a matter of fact, there are a lot of webinars about them yep. out there somewhere. One more, more, yeah. Uh, and uh, if, uh, if you want, we, we can also cover them in our future Digital Dexterity yep. Labs webinar. But for today's presentation, we, ju we are just focusing on Viva Connections because it connects to, to, to something we would like to, to share with you, with you today. So, yeah, so let's see how Viva Connections does, uh, does uh, on a demo, right? Okay, so this is Viva Connections app. As you can see, I have accessed it directly from Microsoft, Microsoft Teams. There is an icon on the left-hand side saying, well, <laughs> Viva Connection. And what Viva Connection does, Connections does, it shows something called homepage. So we have this homepage uh, in our Microsoft 365 environment, which is our company landing page. A page, I wouldn't say the most important page in our environment, but for sure something that is uh, dedicated to all employees, right? So there is something for all to see. And when someone clicks on Viva Connections uh, icon, he gets, I wouldn't say redirected because we are still in Microsoft Teams, but this homepage, this company landing page opens. And what we can see here, we can see the content that is gathered from different part of our, and gathered and curated, of course, from different part of our M365 environment into single place. Right? So we can see articles, we can see article, different articles. We can see uh, links to most useful resources or systems. We can see uh, integration, maybe not necessarily on my example slide because uh, integrations are usually done with um, custom, 
the custom systems which are, well, custom and in general it's difficult to talk about them, but still, uh, we could use those. We can integrate YAML, we can integrate a stream as what it was already mentioned. So we have this landing page with most important curated, inf curated information. Of course, in the paint, it depends on the organization how frequent it is going to change, but there is one thing for sure. We could tell our colleagues, listen up, there is this little icon on the left-hand side in your Microsoft Teams, and if you go there just once, uh, I don't know, day, mm -hmm. week, maybe month in smaller organizations, you will be up to date with all most recent updates. They are there for you, yeah. right? You do not have to browse through different site collections, through YAML groups, through different teams, because, you know, we have this, uh, uh, we have this practice, we have this, uh, we, uh, we have this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, communication scenarios or uh, where we just put everything that's most important to you in a single place for you to use. How, how great is that? You do not have to waste your time browsing yeah. different places. It's all there. And oh, well, if you want to use your mobile device, you can still do it, right? You can use your mobile device as well. So yeah, information for you curated for you. So this is the great thing about Microsoft Viva. So we are not saying people, okay, so there is this SharePoint platform <laughs> when we have all these sites for you. So if there is something you're interested in, you can go and see for your search. I don't know. So yeah, we are, we are rather, it's not a newsletter because newsletters are being sent out and there are newsletters in SharePoint as well. But this is a single place, single point of truth, most important information. If editors curate it correctly, yeah. it's, it's a great value to the end users. And this is great about Microsoft Viva, it's, it focuses on the experience of the, of the end user, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, as I said, there is a lot more to talk about Microsoft Viva, showing these integrations, how to build a, a custom ACE cards, just to, I don't know, pull the information about tasks you have to do in other mm -hmm. systems. So you have really all the information in place. We could talk like half a day about Viva Connections itself, of itself only, but still there is a lot of topics to cover. So let me just come back to my presentation. And if you feel like you need to hear more about Microsoft Viva, just let us know. Okay, so uh, let's now see a few more statistics. I like them. <laughs> I put them in all, all my webinars and um, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about how to, how to use visuals in terms of user engagement, which, is, which may be tricky, right? Because, well... Especially in SharePoint. Yeah, especially in SharePoint. First, <laughs> how do you want to, to, to change visuals of SharePoint, which <laughs> is the first question everyone asks. <laughs> uh, but yeah, aren't visuals a little, you know, shallow, right? So how do, can they drive engagement? Well. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of you know that visuals are important, especially uh, everyone who acts in I know, PR, marketing and internal communications, but let's just remind why, why the visuals are important. So, uh, human brain process an image very fast and uh, some surveys show and research that we need only 13 milliseconds just to, well, process an image. I'm not saying about drawing any conclusions about the image or, you know, digesting it fully, but just to process it and, you know, have some opinion about it. So just a glimpse of an eye and there is something. Already there, yeah. Or they're already there. Either good or bad. I'm not saying that, but it's really, it's really short window we have. Um, when it comes to uh, creating a content, a uh, human brain handles images a lot faster, 60,000 times faster than text. And that's obvious. I know this 60,000 times is something I wanted to show because uh, we know that infographics are there. We all make PowerPoint presentations. Yeah. I am making one right now and we have a nice image on the right hand side, right? Because it helps us to understand it better, uh, faster. Of course, if we overdo it, we may switch the, the, uh, switch the perspective and people are focusing more on the images than the content itself, but in general... It helps a lot. Yeah, it helps a lot. And it not only helps a lot, people are expecting that, right? 95%, that's the ratio of buyers that prefer visual content over text content. So, uh, just an example, Peter, imagine that you worked as a manager and you got a report from your employee, right? Mm -hmm. And the report was written, you know, 
each page has different uh, font size. And there were images, there were not, margins were just messy. And you see that this is something that someone just copied paste from a different sources, right? Yeah. So yeah. how confident would you feel about such a content? I think you know the answer. Right? Yeah, from from the from the start, you'd say, okay, I cannot rely on this. And of the, course. the truth could be that it's the most this is the most reliable content there is. For example, someone worked on that like a month, yeah. right? I can look unprofessional and kill the, you know, the... Yeah. Of course, if you know the person, you can just... Of course. That changes everything. But imagine yourself as a, a communication manager, right? And you worked really hard on your portal, right? You put a lot of effort in it. A lot of employees maybe do not recognize you as a, as a colleague face-to-face, -face, especially mm -hmm. now during the remote work era. So they, maybe they do not know that you are a very serious man, that you put, when you start to do something, it's, you know, it's bulletproof all the time. But what they say, they, what they see, they see SharePoint, right? When, when it comes to, to, to communication portal. And maybe, maybe they suffered from few of those things you mentioned about SharePoint earlier, earlier right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, our IT in my previous company said, use SharePoint is great, we tried, well, it didn't work out. What I see here, I'm new to the company, it's still SharePoint. I know what to think about SharePoint. I've already tried. Yeah, bad rep, bad rep of yeah. SharePoint, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And as communication manager, you don't have SharePoint, you have your own internal communication tool, your platform, your Contozonet, your Northwind space, or however you'd like to call it. You may even have a logo type, right? And you put the, this logo type next to the, next to the portal name, but still, it looks like SharePoint, and people already processed the, <laughs> the image of SharePoint, yeah. and they have their own opinion about it. So this is what we thought when we, uh, when we introduced Engagey Designs. So we thought, OK, so why not to give opportunity to, to all those editors, all those communication managers, all those page owners, just to shape the, their solution, not SharePoint. Let's not talk about SharePoint. Let's talk about their solution. They mm -hmm. put a lot of effort in just to curate the content. Right. So let's do it. So it looks differently. It, it looks unique. It looks interesting. So people, people uh, can assess the content by just looking at the... It looks inviting. Right? Yeah, it looks inviting. It looks immersive. It looks good, right? So we have, we have created an out-of-the-box SharePoint and Viva experience improvement something that could make your SharePoint and Viva look and feel more immersive and brand compliant, right? Something that it's there for business owners to use. So we, 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 run, uh, we, run a, we jumped a step forward, right? So remembering that SharePoint is a platform rather than a, a solution, we created a tool that could be used by a, a Portal owner, solution owner, not a platform or service manager, right? Yep, yep. So you do not have to file any kind of a ticket just to make it work. Uh, it allows a business owner to choose the right graphical design for the occasion, because as you will see on the next slide, uh, we we all, once again we we went a step forward. So not we are not only making SharePoint to be more brand compliant. So you you just say what are your brand colors, or logo types, preferred layouts, or maybe styles you would like to implement, and and engage designs make it happen. We also allow you to to change it a little bit as the times go, as the you know surroundings change, right? right? So employees know that uh, well. It's not like they are encapsulated in their home office anymore. Right, but speaking about the change, right, and obviously knowing SharePoint, as I explained before, uh, with this being very IT-centric platform, how do you deal with that solution? How do you deal with the evergreen nature of SharePoint and, uh, and the constant instant change and constant change? Oh, uh, yeah, so I forgot about it. So uh, this is delivered as a service. So. Right. Uh, so we are the ones who are responsible for maintaining all the packages up to date. As a matter of fact, we are working with the visuals of SharePoint for like 14 years now. Right. So, right. you know, <laughs> we are black belts, black belts. Uh, in, in it and we were uh, ad adjusting and adapting to all Microsoft changes for a quite time now. So we decided just to share the knowledge and share the service with others because since it's not a problem for us internally, so if we managed those, those packages and if we just updated them uh, on the fly, right, this is something that everyone could benefit from. So 
any yeah. service uh, service subscriber does not have to worry worry about those changes at all because they are being right. being, being dealt with in the background. That's 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 really good because like I've mentioned before with the SharePoint, uh, you know, being again IT centric, not user centric. Obviously, you could get it right already back then. It it was possible. It's it's not like it was limited uh, in in that way. But the effort behind it, the investment, the extra investment on the top, what they really invested in licenses was, was quite significant. So you basically needed expert resources on site constantly to work, obviously, with that, with that platform. And often they were like in the large companies, especially they were MVP level, right? So obviously there was a there was a significant cost uh, behind it. So that's really that's really good that you taking care of that part, which is. The most shaky part. Let's let's let, let's admit and, that, right? Because evergreen, uh, it has uh, its its value and its pros and cons, right? But uh, but yeah, it also has the uh, the challenge of change, right? And uh, I'm sure you've heard this question anyway uh, a lot of time in the past. Yeah, and we are paying this toll right now. So whenever we are discussing with our partner or with our clients what could be done in terms of visuals of SharePoint, first we have to deal with all those questions. It, yeah. it, it's not going to perform well. Yeah. We've tried this. We they like disqualifying we, questions. We they try to been, disqualify yeah, already technology and yourself. We have yeah. been told uh, been not, there, yeah. not to do it. And yeah, I well, just in a second, we'll show you that all of those uh, can be handled with. Of course, all the experiences, uh, the experience that led people to say those things, well, this happened, right? But it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, but before we dive in into a demo, that's just a glimpse of what you could do in terms of, uh, well, changing the visuals of your SharePoint. These are just an examples. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, the ones you could use out of the box whenever you're a subscriber of the service, right? So on the top row, we can see uh, some uh, Easter themed uh, SharePoint, let's call it a skin, the, uh, the theme prepared for the, uh, for the summer season, autumn as well, the winter holiday season. On the bottom line, we have some examples of how we could adjust the look and feel of SharePoint to different color schemes, different, uh, different brands. Of course, they are quite plain, so we can just just look at them and uh, you know uh, understand everything that's going on there. But when we are working with a client on some of their bespoke themes, we can go wild. <laughs> right. so, yeah. And uh, we do not stop there, but the, I couldn't put more images on the slide. But we can also uh, also support some uh, uh, team branding, right? For example, right. We, are, we are a finance team. We are a project management team. Yeah. Maybe we would like our share our workspace to be branded in a way that reflects that, right? So yeah. we, when we are finance team, maybe some graph or maybe some you know a pile. Yeah, of they like that. Yeah, the, the, the team identity, the belonging to the group, specific group within the business, especially if it's a larger organization. These teams team tend to kind of be together, right? Yeah, and that's 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 true. Maybe it, it, it sounds silly for for the for a start, but when we when you talk about the, uh, with those people and see that okay, that that really looks nice. This is something. This is our own, right? And the team branding on the one hand side, and uh, on the on the other hand, we can have some uh, support for for I don't know for for some events like uh, town halls, right? So you have this recurring town halls and you'd like to put all the content information about it and you'd like people to know that okay this is a town hall area right if there is a conference uh, you know the physical conference yeah. and you're going to different parts of the uh, uh, of the venue well they are branded differently right so why don't you put branding into your own digital workplace in that yeah I, I like that actually that example because i wish we had that uh, even obviously after being a sharepoint company uh, you know, we never had uh, uh, such a thing, and and uh, town hall is a good example because I remember how the corporate obviously driving the organizational culture and trying to bring everyone together and obviously communicate to them uh, uh, like exciting things. Uh, there was a lot of pressure on managers like myself for all the sellers, all the teams, basically everyone to be in it. It was watched. So I think changing the changing the graphics or promoting that event yeah. in a graphical in a graphical. Uh, a, a way I think it, it would help with that kind of attendance and, uh, and, 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 and get people excited and actually prepare uh, for that event, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and so once again, just to mention, we completely understand that that's not something that will change the game completely, right? So we are talking about the visual layer, but it's, it's important. The statistics are there 
And on the other hand, the statistical behavior is also important. So maybe not everyone is going to be uh, to be involved in such a manner, especially those you know those who are already disconnected from the brand and that already made their mind about be being under or not being within an organization. But there are still an audience that that can be addressed with, and yeah, that's that's something we should be aiming at. But yeah, so let's just prove that that's. It exists. It exists, and <laughs> it's a very good idea, right? So <laughs> let's, uh, yeah, let's let's pay this toll I already mentioned. Okay, so what we can see here on the screen is a completely standard SharePoint site. <laughs> That's on purpose, because I wanted just to give a little perspective. Because what we are going to uh, see just in a second, we will see a different views of the identical SharePoint site. They are going to be identical, not the same one. So we can switch between them uh, really fast. Uh, Usually switching in SharePoint designs takes about three to four minutes. And yeah, we do not have much time left, I believe. So this is a SharePoint site that covers, from our perspective, like 75% of landing page requirements, of course, in terms of the concepts, right? So we have the promoted news area. You, you see this, this banner here. Uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have news on the left-hand side, summarized ones. We have links to most important resources that were put here by our uh, well content curators. And we have also some event calendar on the right-hand side, the most important things that go are going to happen in the future. And we can imagine this could be our company landing page with most important news, new summaries, resources, events that are, that are there. Maybe some additional parts could be here as well, but as I said, 75%. So how could we improve the experience of it? which is not that bad, but it looks like um, any SharePoint we can find out there. So let's find out. Let's click here and switch to our Engage Designs, Engage Designs themed page. Uh, as you can see, we have the same page layout, more or less. We have the same elements, but they look differently. Um, of course, everyone has have their own, uh, their own opinion, right? So someone can say it's look, it looks a lot better. Someone may say, oh, I don't like those colors. But what we can agree on it looks different, it doesn't look like SharePoint. And we can imagine that since we, we are able to, you know, squeeze the header a little bit, change the colors, put some background in, and the frames, the, the, the logo types and everything, we could adjust and create a bespoke theme for almost every brand. As I said, we can go wild. Uh, if I wanted to be even bold, I could say something like the, the art of possible is great and the possibilities are limitless. Of course there are limits, right? <laughs> uh, but still, there is a lot of that that can be achieved, right? So, so this is this is our page. This is how it looks like, and as we've seen already before, it is compliant with uh, in terms of Microsoft Viva. We've seen Microsoft Viva before, and this is also compliant with Microsoft Viva. So, let us switch to Microsoft Teams view, and we can see a Viva environment. This is Microsoft Teams, right? We can see the, the button, Microsoft Viva button, on, Viva Connections button on the le left hand side. And we can see exactly the same layout and page theme in Microsoft Viva. So it is cross, cross platform, right? It, it works both in Microsoft Viva Connections and in a browser. And what it actually does, if we, if we make it compliant with our brand, if we make it compliant with our colors, logo types and everything, uh, people will see this uh, as a solution, not, the, not as a part of SharePoint platform. If we name it, because we have this possibility to name Microsoft Viva application as we want, so we can see here, it's not Viva Connections, it's Engage360, that's the name we, we picked for today. People will, see, will, will say, I found something on Engage360. They won't say, or Contoso.net, or North, North Wind Space, or whatever. They won't say, I found something on SharePoint. Because the other person will say, I was on SharePoint today, and I didn't see it. <laughs> so we are avoiding that kind of talk. And people, see, people will see that we, we put much effort to shape the tool we are sharing with them. Even though, for example, this was like 5% of work we did in the end. And the 95% of work was to curate the content and prepare it, right? this 5% in the end really matters in terms of perspective and how alluring or, or interesting our solution is going to be for the end users. So this is how we can adjust and brand it to our own, uh, uh, to our own needs, to our solution, to our uh, uh, visual identity. But we also said that we could adjust 
maybe this solution or maybe some some parts of it to uh, to be more uh, uh, to be more um, for the occasion, right? So we can see here the same identical page in a summer theme, right? So we can see, okay, uh, during a summer season, maybe we should put some some page that summarizes summer activities, right? And we would like to say, okay, what do we have here? Maybe we have some summer car cinema, or maybe some uh, uh, some activities for children, right? Or or anything like that. We could share it in a screen that's branded with with summer team, or maybe since we would like to shake things a little bit, we would like to change the whole landing page with some other more occasional uh, look and feel. So people will say, did you see what they did? It's crazy, they are, they are sunglasses, seashells, and, and, and birds, and, and, and everything uh, in, Viva, uh, in Engage 360 app, right? And uh, people will be just curious. They they would like they will be able to not will be able, but they they are going to want to see what's there. And when they are going to go here, they will just read through all the content we created for them. So this yeah. is just a hook for them. Yeah, to they will all here. notice. They it will be uh, it will it will be always noticed everywhere across the across the business, right? Because it's just uh, yeah, it's yeah. And as really I cool. as I said, it's all here. On the right hand side, just click the gear icon, click Engage Designs link, and you can select from different different themes that are there. Uh, I have installed that many, but we have we can we can have more, we can have less. We have summer vacation, autumn, Easter, winter holidays, some corporate ones, or maybe some event related ones. Maybe there's an anniversary, the town hall we already mentioned. Yeah, or we, industry related, right? Yeah, we just switch here, click save, and this is this is what's required from the from the business only perspective just to make it just to make it happen and i hope we've already proven that well first it works and it works quite fine right so so when we are here and we would like to go and read through the, art, the article the the performance is also okay even though we changed the look and feel of sharepoint almost completely so yeah so that's engage design that's our idea of how we can uh, interest people more and create some immersive environment and come out a little bit from inside the screen so they they feel this environment even when they are in their homes right okay so this concludes the demos we have prepared for today okay so we have come up to the summary of what we've seen today so from the things i was presenting i hope i i've already shown that uh, brand and team identity the uh, making the content more appealing, uh, branded in a different dimension, like teams, social, or of course, organizational manner, uh, matters and drives the, uh, the, 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 the engagement, right? Through motivation, through making people more interested and curious and belong once again, right? Yep. But there is more we can achieve. And Peter, if you could say a little more what else could be done. Yeah. Yeah, like, me, like I've mentioned uh, at the beginning, right, this is just one of the elements, uh, very helpful one, very catchy one, right, because uh, like you said, uh, it's catching the eye really quickly and, and people will go to it just to see it and then they will probably stay there and, and, and read uh, some important information uh, from their perspective. Uh, so, yeah, so, but taking two steps back, because we've started obviously from, from that element, which on, on this pyramid, it's a, it's a blue box, it's somewhere in the middle. Anything uh, from the blue box above it's Viva related is the right direction. <coughs> but a lot of the time, there might be still some gaps uh, uh, just before that. Uh, so just to make sure that everyone understands these basic needs and sure. fundamental needs, because we cannot uh, forget them, because then it's like with math. You need to kind of some sequence uh, uh, events, right? Sequence of events. So, uh, so people, from the starting from fundamentals, people want to make sure that they want to complete their job, all their tasks, communicate with their colleagues, right? Collaborate with them remotely, right? Without mm -hmm. like technical training or anything like that, right? It should be intuitive enough so they can use it remotely, right? That's the first step. Second step is people need to feel confidence, the confidence in the digital workplace that they are always using the right tools for the job. And that's not always that straightforward in, in M365, I must admit. So that helps a lot. The, 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 the cataloging uh, for specific use cases is a, is a key thing to make sure that they're always using the right tools for the job. 
uh, then uh, they also want to make sure that they are always using the right information, right data for their for mm -hmm. job to complete the task or to make a business decision, right? So we're talking about a single source of truth architecture, which is extremely important from the from that from the risk control perspective from productivity perspective and to avoid any frustration with the team because if you have a lot of documents with the same name you never know which one is right and which one is already expired right so so that's another thing right then confident as well that there is a right level of security built in but in the background, behind the things that they're doing in the digital workplace. So in a sense, they want to make sure that if I can do this or that in digital workplace, it's allowed and it's not going to... So I'm not going to break it. It's, uh, yeah, you're not going to break it, you're not going to expose the data externally, you're not going to overshare it, right? Because if you have that button, if you can click it, it means that it's allowed, right? So that's the key to digital confidence uh, for the users, especially with all these cyber security threats that are That's growing, true. right? It, it brings the, uh, you know, it brings some, uh, uh, you know, people can get a little bit nervous when they're trying to do something which can lead them to maybe uh, not doing anything or maybe doing different way, which is maybe even worse and they don't know. So, uh, so that's quite important as well. Then, uh, going up, uh, you obviously talk about the, you know, the branding, right? There is also element of, uh, you know, sense uh, of belonging to the team. So you do things per uh, business group, per interest group, right? Uh, this can be uh, this can be things like even change management. You need to do it uh, per group, right? So that's quite uh, that's quite important to so they feel that that's uh, that's uh, that's part of they. Uh, it's something for them, right? Specifically. Uh, and then, uh, you know, in terms of, again, driving the sense of belonging and the identification of the, with the brand and participation uh, uh, in the business. And, 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 and that's also quite important to make sure that you bring open-minded uh, 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 open minded culture that they can raise ideas, right, and they can share them and they can potentially be something big, something strategic, right? Doesn't matter where they are in the organization, everyone can make this one mm -hmm. billion dollar idea, right? So that's also uh, uh, quite important. And finally, uh, the, something you've mentioned already, the self-development, the growth, the sense of growth. Everyone wants to feel that they're growing, they, they're developing their skills. And that's not necessarily means only your corporate uh, related to your job and the, to your organization skills, but also the one uh, that just make them better in all the things which might have influence on work as well. So, uh, so all these things are quite important in terms of uh, making people engaged, making, making people uh, kind of appreciated, recognize their uh, recognize they successes, right? All these things are quite, uh, are quite crucial. So I hope, I really hope we're going to have more time and more sessions where we can cover these elements too. Yeah, especially since it makes a lot of sense because when we look at this and we, we shaped it as a pyramid, right? So we we should be confident about moving forward to more specific topics if the previous one are covered right so yep. like in change management so first work on awareness then on desire and so on yep. so the same goes here so give the most fundamental things and then yep. move forward yeah right. exactly okay so thank you very much peter for this summary. thank you Ukash. and thank everyone uh, who attended here today uh, once again we know that weekend is upon, weekend is upon us and we are really uh, grateful that you stayed that long especially since we are like five minutes of the schedule which we yeah. are sorry about but yeah, yeah. a lot of things to, to discuss i hope you understand um, and now we are going to dive in the questions we were asked and answer them so please uh, stay with us if you are interested in those answers so once again thank yeah. you thank you thank you so and much have a nice weekend Okay, so let's see those questions. Uh, uh, I hope I hope that I took down my mic, so uh, my uh, my sound will be okay. Okay, so let's go through them. So first one, oh, it's from Camille actually. Welcome to our webinar. The session is being recorded. Yeah, so uh, we will send you the details, the all necessary links, as well as the link to the recording of today's webinar uh, afterwards. Okay, so first one is uh, Viva Learning uh, LMS, and I, I think by LMS it's uh, you meant learning management system. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So technically, 
No, no, it's 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 not. Uh, but obviously they are very closely connected. So we will, I think, we will, uh, as as discussed earlier, we will cover this uh, in a separate session because it's definitely worth attention, and there is a lot of information to take as well how they connect the Viva Learning and the LMS that are LMS systems that are actually uh, uh, certified, if I can say that way, yeah. for Viva or Viva compatible. Yeah, especially since it was on the top of our pyramids. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So okay. So, uh, but even though we will send you a few links uh, to Viva Learning resources as yeah. well in yeah. a summary to our webinar when we are going to summarize all those questions. Okay. Uh, next one. How much does it cost? <laughs> Straight to the point. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I can't tell right now uh, what the question refers to. So let's let's uh, summarize. All the costs we've seen today. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to Viva connections, so the Microsoft tool we presented pre uh, as first, uh, it doesn't cost anything in addition to the M365 licenses you you presumably have. So this one is uh, ready to be configured. This one is ready to be uh, to be used. And when it comes to Engage Design Service, uh, we will send you a link to uh, Engage Design's landing page, uh, which summarizes the different plans that are there. Uh, it starts with three, and there are like three additional plans. But I th I think it would be just easier for you just to go through them on your own. Uh, yeah, because there are some uh, some differences that are covered uh, within this yeah. landing page. Uh, yeah, and we have those this program. So if any one of you is interested in uh, in both of these things we we discussed today, so Viva connections and uh, engage designs, uh, just let us know because uh, currently we have this uh, uh, we have this engagement where we. Uh, are giving away uh, consoles as well as some configuration activities for free yep. and some uh, some subscriptions for free as well to, uh, for the Engage designs just to well have a tangible experience with both. Yep. So yeah, so I think that's a good time to start. As a proof of value, yeah. let's, let's put it up. Yeah. So it's, it starts with free. <laughs> okay. And the third and the last one. Microsoft says that graphical mods are not supported. Uh, yeah, they, they say that they, they, they do say that. And uh, but they are saying they are not saying they are forbidden. They say saying that they are not supported by them. So if you have any uh, customizations or whatsoever in terms of the graphical part of, of SharePoint, which we've seen today, um, they are not going to be supported, solved or whatever by, by, by Microsoft uh, according to their support uh, support service. But as we also covered today, uh, this is something uh, well Engage Designs does for you. So it's uh, the service itself, this is the service plan, it consists of all support activities in terms of possible Microsoft changing the M365 environment. So yeah, so these changes are not supported. You are not going to be fined by Microsoft <laughs> for doing so, and they're not going to take your licenses away. Um, uh, it just means that if you spot something that should look differently, uh, Engage Design support team is the first team that should handle it. But as far as I am told, they are doing it, doing it in a proactive way. Yep. So there is a great chance you're not going to see any glitches at all. So yeah, I think that's it for today. So uh, I think we are going to thank everyone yeah. for the fourth time like now. But yeah. thank you very much for staying with us today. Yeah, and have a lovely weekend yeah. as well. Yeah, take care. Bye. Bye bye.